Hello everyone, welcome back to ACL Stairs. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at the Silver ST767. Now, this thing is really dirty. Uh, this one I picked up from eBay seller Rustic underscore 79. Thanks very much for sending this one out to me and uh, arrived in good condition. The whole unit looks pretty awesome, uh, I've got to say. It has that really nice old style electronics look to it and I really dig the appearance of this thing. So looking at the front you've got this really cool four band tuner, got the uh, tweeters here they're all metal grills really cool. So you've got metal switches here which is cool, tape counter, to some battery indicator, detune you've got tune, you've got FM stereo, those little chrome microphone holders, really nice deck here. It actually it doesn't look too bad. The um, Buttons are functioning on the side. You've got the tune now. The it's obviously something wrong with the dial string. Inputs and outputs. You've got the DIN connector. You've got uh, auxiliary in RCAs, tape out, uh, external speakers, and you've got phones jack there. Uh, also a remote. That's really cool. On the back, you've got the standard two prong connector here. Just make sure this is a 240 volt, and it is. And uh, again, the uh, center negative. You've got your FM antenna connectors up there as well. Just looking at the back, looks really nice. And then on the top here, you've got power on, mono stereo, auxiliary mic cassette, radio, bass treble, balance volume. Then all your switches here. These are all push button switches, so that's really, really nice. Um, other thing about these that I really like is uh, you have those removable screws and you can take off that front panel and uh, clean it exactly the type of thing that i love collecting so let's plug it in test it out so i can't adjust the dial here because the string is broken press play oh wow so we've, the tape is working so now these keys are a little bit dirty and they when i press them down they come up really slowly so let's open this up a little bit of something's broken off inside there as well yeah missing a screw in this top left hand section so yeah definitely somebody's been in here and uh, i suspect changed the belt inside the battery compartment you've got two screws that have got to come out as well particular unit you're going to take off the uh, back part here now you're going to have wires here for the uh, external fm antenna three wires that are up and the top here for power adapter wires here as well so So looking at the back of the board here, so what I'm going to do is just give this board a bit of a clean up and then I'm just going to remove this. So there's a look at the unit pulled apart and uh, what you'll have to do is take off the round dials at the top. I just use a screwdriver and pop those all off. Nine or ten screws just holding that uh, board in. Also what you have here is the uh, these type of connectors. Disconnect these ones. I've also disconnected the uh, microphone enables you to take the whole front of the board off belt looks in really good condition somebody has replaced this belt it's pretty clean inside here i can see the string is actually off on roller here it's also on off this roller here actual string is not broken so that's a good thing so there's a look at the tape deck nice little cover plate on the, over that pinch roller looks like it needs a fair bit of cleaning so does the, the head uh also the record head but i think the real issue with this one is just the uh, cleaning up of all this old grease that's in here. Most of this grease has gone all hard and you'll have to put a little bit of force on it. You do get uh, hold of that uh, rubber. Make sure you don't lose that. So what I'm going to do here is just give this a little bit of a clean. Here's a look at the tape mechanism. Spent about an hour and a half on this. I've used probably about 150 cotton butts. The grease had actually gotten underneath the metal plates so I had to put it up vertically and um, put a tissue underneath it so all of the grease actually came down. This is probably the worst that I've ever had on a tape mechanism. Nice little uh, covers on the springs too here, I really like that. Just here, this little metal section that comes out on an angle here, what was happening was that getting stuck on the edge of here, so obviously there was a little bit of lubrication that they've put on the end. Over time it's just turned into like a glue, stopping this thing from uh, moving out of the way. What I ended up having to do was just bend this out a little bit, give it a bit of a clean here first before I put it back in. And also I've got to look at the uh, dial string. So I've got the tape back in here, I'll put a little bit more cable management on here. They had uh, the tape around on this uh, these wires here, you can see this black tape here. This stuff is really bad. It uh, leaves a really sticky mess pretty much half a day just to clean this mech. Okay, so one of the things I noticed was that uh, one of these little 
pillars were broken off over here on the left hand side just here just this little pillar that I'm pointing to just there it's used to have the dial cord it goes underneath it that is a really major part of the dial cord now I've used a little bit of Loctite 401 and uh, Loctite 401 is great it bonds good but uh, really make this strong and the best way to do that is to use a glue gun uh, the other smaller glue guns but uh, they don't make the consistency of the glue hot enough this is the one that you're going to need the other thing that I had to do here was remove this uh, front cover from the uh, front of the unit and uh, there was some spiders and uh, some other other things that were stuck in there that I need to clean out. It has little tabs on there that you on the other side that you've got to flick out. So a quick look at the uh, speakers just before I uh, put this all back together. Just want to check speakers out, remove any of the dust. So what I've got here is a laser cut one millimeter washer. I've glued that on. That stops uh, the movement here of that uh, roller there of that guide roller there coming off. Just, just behind there, there's an actual little uh, pillar. And what seems to be missing from there looks like a roller. I've looked inside the whole unit and I can't find rollers. I had a little metal washer and I glued that on top and then uh, I used a gun and I glued that onto the actual pillar section. Originally how it was, it was actually off that roller and it sat up about up here and it was pulling the too high and uh, lifting it off the rail. It's not 100% working, not traveling the whole way. In the future I probably will have to get a new uh, dial string. Okay so here's the uh, finished unit. You can see how much nicer this looks. It took me around about five hours to clean the outside of this unit. Yeah the dirt was so thick on here that it, I needed to scrub it with a, a nylon brush and it pretty much destroyed my nylon brush. So that should give you some indication just how much cleaning needed to be done this unit. So the amount of tissues and a whole bottle of this 99% uh, IPA, that was the only stuff that would actually remove the majority of the dirt. And I had to be careful not to put it on the actual writing. So I had to go around uh, all the sections and then use a 50% IPA mix to clean the rest of it. Yeah, the handle came up really nicely, the, the buttons, came up beautiful. Um, there is you know a little bit of yellowing on this unit. You can see all the uh, dials now, you can see all the triangles, uh, pointers, you can see the red on the power on button which I didn't even know was there, it was just black. The grills took me about an hour to do. It's really like the aerial on this thing too, it's pretty cool. It really has that 70s feel about it, the way that the uh, aerial goes all the way in. You can actually bend it over as well. So there's a look at the RCA connectors on the side there. They're all been cleaned up and uh, they looked absolutely disgusting. They were pretty much just black. I actually had to scrape that with the metal tool that I had here. And also in the DIN connector there, I had to actually spray IPA inside the uh, plug there and clean out all the inside the actual pins. So that's pretty much it for this episode. The Silver ST767. This is the uh, Shin Shirasuna Electric Corp, Japan. I'm guessing this one was probably around about uh, maybe the late 70s or early 80s. It definitely has that uh, vintage look to it. There was also the Silver ST757 also had a very similar look to this as well. I think it had actually a VU meter up in the central section here rather than it having the uh, uh, indicator lights here. If I see that one, I'll definitely be picking that one up. Now we'll have to go back into this at a later date and when I get some dial cord uh, because I really want to redo that uh, dial stringing again. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, I've got uh, one more boombox there that we'll be working on which I'm really excited to test out. One of the last boombox repairs that I'm going to be doing on here. I may look at uh, doing some more repairs boom boxes as I get them in but they won't be at, uh, you know on a weekly basis type of thing so thanks everyone for watching see you on the next project